Hello everybody, welcome to Tomorrow, and coming up we're going to be talking about the International Space Station updates in regards to the cargo resupply services to it. And also we're going to be talking about some modifications to a hull thruster that has been tested recently, and some statements that have been made in the Senate regarding the Falcon 9 failure. That's what we're going to be talking about for this, your space pod, for July 7th, 2015. First off, the Russian Progress Resupply cargo ship that launched on July 3rd has successfully rendezvoused and docked with the International Space Station on Sunday, July 5th, and this will add about a month to the International Space Station's supply reserves. On board this Progress was mainly propellant, oxygen, water, parts, supplies, and some experimental hardware as well. With these additional supplies, the space station will be able to stay crewed until roughly November instead of October. However, the next resupply ships that are going to the space station also need to be successful in order to continue operations like normal. The next resupply vehicle, thankfully, will be Japan's HTV-5 vehicle, and that's scheduled to launch on August 16th, so if that's able to be successful, that'll be able to spread out their contingency plan for a long time into next year. After the Japanese HT vehicle, there's going to be two more Progress vehicles this year. The first one is scheduled to launch on September 21st, and the second is scheduled to launch on November 19th. And to my knowledge, they're planning on using the Soyuz U rocket instead of the Soyuz 2.1A rocket, which was the reason for the failure of the Progress not long ago. Orbital ATK's first Cygnus flight since the accident last October is scheduled to launch in December on an Atlas V rocket being provided by United Launch Alliance. However, they are looking at the possibilities of moving that launch up to as early as October. SpaceX's eighth commercial resupply services mission was scheduled for September 2nd, although they haven't quite found the cause of the Falcon 9 failure on their most recent launch. Elon Musk did put out a tweet saying to expect preliminary results regarding the last fight by the end of the week. And I'm not sure if he meant the end of last week, since that was posted on July 5th, or the end of this week. But in any case, we should be finding out some results very soon. With the return to the Progress vehicle to flight and successfully being able to rendezvous and dock with the space station, hopefully things will be okay. We won't have to evacuate the space station and be able to get the rest of the supplies we need to continue into next year and beyond. In other news, Aerojet Rocketdyne has tested an upgraded version of their XR5 Hall Thruster, or Ion Thruster, and they tested it on the Air Force's X-37B, which is on orbit right now, so that's pretty cool. These are the same Hall Thrusters that were used on the ABS and UTELSAT satellites that were built by Boeing and launched by SpaceX just recently, and you can find out more information about that here. On one final note, I wanted to talk about how I've been very concerned about what the reaction is going to be in the Senate and Congress about the most recent SpaceX Falcon 9 failure. But there was a statement that was released by John McCain. Say what you want about John McCain. But he said this. He said that the most recent failure should not be used as leverage to buy more of the Russian rocket engines that power United Launch Alliance's Atlas V rocket. He also said that he is confident that this minor setback will in no way impede the future success of SpaceX and its ability to support U.S. national security space missions. There will be those that will seek to leverage this incident to argue for deepening America's dependence on Russian rocket engines for national security space launches. This mishap in no way diminishes the urgency of ridding ourselves of the Russian RD-180 rocket engine. It's a powerful statement, and keep in mind that he is the chairman of the Senate Armed Services Committee, so his words do have some weight to them. I might not agree with John McCain on everything, but in this regard, I agree 100%. Anyway, let me know what you guys think about these particular updates, and I want to know whether or not you think the space station will have to be evacuated if any more accidents occur, or if it will be business as usual and at least the year-long mission that's up there right now will be able to continue on through to its conclusion. So let me know what you think. If you like these space pods that we're doing, then consider contributing to our Patreon campaign at patreon.com spacepod. And we are very grateful to everyone who's been helping out already, and we're getting a lot closer to some of the goals that we have. So thank you very much to everyone who's contributed and making this show possible. Thank you very much for watching this video. My name is Michael Clark, and hopefully you know a little bit more today than you did yesterday, thanks to tomorrow. Keep looking up, everybody, and I will see you guys in the future.